hi, this is how to use this guide. This is for a specific class, but you can use it for a variety of different things. Essentially, preparing to say something or speak or present a case, whether it's informative or persuasive, um, there's a lot of preparation you can do to help. And the library's here to help you find scholarly, evidence-based things. So what I'm going to show you briefly, and reach out to me anytime you want. I'm, <laughs> I'm this guy, and you can email me right here, uh, Dale the Librarian. So I'm going to show you essentially the big four things you know in every academic library, how to determine whether something is good or good enough. I have a quick metaphor for that. Um, and how to develop keywords. I have some ideas right here to help with that, with whatever topic you're working with. But know that you're working with a librarian in all of these, um, and it's not a big deal to reach out and say, hey, can you help me with keywords or research, or et cetera. This is just enough to get you into trouble. Um, when you go to any academic library, you have a librarian for every academic discipline um, that is able to help you with simple things like, hey, I need to find a book that's talking about Mario Kart, or I need to check out Mario Kart, or I want um, help on the cultural impact of Mario Kart. I'm kind of riffing on this. I think this is somebody's topic. Um, and it, my favorite character, by the way, Princess Peach, because uh, she rode the old 1960s Honda Grand Prix, which I did very well. Uh, be that as it may, here's the four things you can expect apart from a librarian. In a library website, there'll be a main search area where you can type in Mario Kart. And this is a search uh, that's using some of the databases and some of the books, and it's kind of a discovery tool. So this isn't where you would go to find an exact thing. This is where you'd kind of tool around and see what's written on things, whether you're looking in books or articles um, or just in general for concepts. This is a great place to find keywords. Second thing that every academic library has is databases. These are things that we subscribe to um, that are like scholarly journals, or some are videos, or some are dissertations. Your faculty will often say, oh, you need to go to Academic Search Ultimate, and that will be under A. Or they'll say, go to JSTOR, or they'll have the name of a database. I have um, some suggestions of databases for you to try. You can also go in by discipline. If you know what uh, discipline or what class you're in, uh, the business librarian will have put their favorite at the top, or whatever library you go to, and they'll have a link to a guide, just like the guide that I'm going to show you in just a minute. We'll go into databases in a minute. Um, if you're off campus, make sure to log in to CIS, Canvas, or this off-campus login, or you won't get full text access. Um, third thing that every academic library has is interlibrary loan. If there's an article that you find on Google Scholar or cited in a book or something and you want to see it, um, you can ask for it here. Um, if you need to know how to do that, I made a handy little video right here. Um, but th essentially, that's a free service for you to use. There's no limit. Ask for things. Um, our intention is to reduce all the barriers for you getting access to stuff. So if we can't find it, um, some other library will find it for you. Last thing is research guides. Research guides are kind of alluded to in the databases, where if you want to talk to the business librarian, well, there they are. And you can see all of, their, um, all of their different things that they're working with. And they'll have a handy instructional video for working. So you're not alone. Um, and you can work with a variety of people in all the different topics that are taught on campus and researched. Um, to find my guide for this class, you would go to communication. And you would just, there's a bunch of communication tabs, but this main bold communication, the guide that we are currently on is this one, this public speaking. So I'm not going to close this tab. Um, so the main idea of this was to help with an assignment where you're doing research for an informative speech. Informative speech has a little bit of what you're talking about, but you're also bringing together um, items from maybe the web or maybe known sources or maybe scholarly sources. So I'm going to show you how to do all of those. Um, a good metaphor, how do we determine whether something's good enough? If you think about like going on a road trip and you see like, the, we talked about this in class, where there's like roller food. So it might be like a taquito, or it might be a hot dog, or it might be something else that's cylindrical shaped that you might find in a gas station on a road trip. We don't know where that came from necessarily. We don't know how um, when the roller was cleaned last. We don't know how old it is. We don't know where the, the roller food maybe came from. And so it's kind of a big mystery. 
if we are just satisfying, like we just want to get something to eat, we're hungry, that might be good enough. But if we're presenting this to like the Queen of England or something like that, then we might want to go with like really high level food that's like from a, like who's that, the Hell's Kitchen guy um, who's like swearing on the TV show all the time. He might have a restaurant, so we know who he is. We know what quantity and quality we're going to get. So moving all the way up to scholarly articles, we know that when we go into scholarly and academic research, and these are my favorite databases for your class today, by the way. If we go into sociological abstracts, we know that these are vetted scholars who have earned tenure and they have PhDs and grants. Um, and it's the real deal. And these are like that Michelin star rating. So we know that we're in a good place with these. Even so, there's a level of quality that we can talk about. One is peer review. How do we know if something is peer reviewed? I'll talk about that really briefly. Um, so when you're starting out um, and you're looking um, to figure out what is written about it, you could go to the open web and you could go to Gemini. Gemini, and so you can see some of the things that I've looked for. So I said, what's a synonym for future? So one of the questions I was looking for, you can see in the guide, is like, well, is AI going to replace people um, or machine learning? And what's the impact on humanity? So you could put future of humanity in quotes. So that looks for one concept. But what about the people who say the future um, in deference to the workplace culture for humanity. And so those aren't stuck together. So we might want keywords that are separated out. So let me show you what happened in um, this advanced search that I have canned for you. You can see these keywords that I have. So I broke it out into synonyms and related terms. Um, and I have future. And I did a search. And I discovered that future wasn't prominent, in, prominent enough. So I put it in the title. And you can, I manipulated this, so this was in the title. You could do, um, have this be in the title too. Let's see if that changes it. So there's 2,500 results. What if we put AI in the title only? All of a sudden there's just 700. So you could do that with um, this other search too. Mario Kart or Nintendo or Wii or Nintendo Switch. If you're looking at the cultural impact of Mario Kart 8, um, it might be too narrow. Um, and so what I did is I put these, let's put this one in the title too. And I wanted culture or community. You could put humanity if you wanted to. And all of a sudden, military video games after 9-11, that's a little out of date. Mario Kart series, um, efficacy of Wii training for leg muscle formation. I'm not finding a lot of things in here. What you'll have to do is negotiate these as you go uh, because there's no um, artificial intelligence telling us what the most relevant things are. That matters to you. Or you could go to like Google Gemini again and could say, what is the cultural significance of, of Mario Kart? And AI will give you synonyms. Oh, nostalgia. Nostalgia, um, social bonding, then you can go back to these keywords and you could say, or um, social bonding, or nostalgia. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it might be, look at that, there's an article on 1990s nostalgia. Uh, for me, it's 1980s, where you could play like the racing video game. So as you go, you're going to have to negotiate with the stuff that you know on the open web and go back to these scholarly resources. How do we find out if something is scholarly is a question that we'll cover in a bit. But you'll notice right here, peer reviewed is like the top of the scholarly stuff. So let me move my head out of the way and apply this filter. So if you want to go straight for the scholarly, you can do that. I'm looking for the nostalgia, physical activity. There's a lot of balance testing. I'm not, there's a lot of balance. Oh, here we go. Motivations for nostalgia in Nintendo fandom. So my original keyword of Mario Kart 8 might not have worked. I might have had to expand out. 
by the way, there's a citation generator right here. Um, and it's sometimes right. Um, OK, let's go back. So finding keywords is a big one to start out with. Um, and feel free to write to me. Um, or you can go and say, go to Google Gemini or ChatGPT and say, hey, what are good keywords for Mario Kart um, cultural impact? And it might give you answers like that. Um, so out on the open web, you might get keywords. In these, trends, ideas, and keywords, these are not scholarly, but this is where you might find more ideas. Um, so if you go to like US Newsstream, this is most of the newspapers in the United States. Um, so I did a search for gaming and culture. You might find things if you know if there's a particular group working on things. Um, or you could ask it more specific questions, gaming and culture, and gender, and masculinity. And now I'm thinking they never should have called Taylor Swift a crazy cat lady. Um, so there's dating apps. And you can get more ideas of what's going on. But again, this isn't scholarly. This is just like uh, people talking about things. Um, it's not unlike the internet, except we know that, that it's the new Pittsburgh Courier. So it's curated to some extent. We know who's talking about things. Um, your results may vary, but this is really handy if there's a particular event that happens or if there's a particular game. Um, <laughs> let's, <laughs> in quotes, and Taylor Swift um, and Trump. Um, so she just endorsed Kamala Harris um, today. And so that's why I'm doing this. Did you see why I'm doing the and in here? I'm making it look exactly like the advanced search that had the and in between. I've just learned how to type them myself. So you can go back. <laughs> so be that as it may. These are fun to cruise around in to see what's going on in current culture. But the scholarship and academic research, let's go into that and see what's in here. So I want to look up like the future of AI. Um, no, let's look up somebody else's topic. I have some of your topics over here. OK, Boston Marathon. So if we're looking um, at like the cultural impact of a particular event, the Boston Marathon bombing, you can just do that in quotes. But let's go to advanced search. So sociology is the study of things that go on in society. Boston Marathon. And let's do bomb or bomb, bombing. That might be enough to start out with. And you can click. Not every uh, database is going to have a peer reviewed. But if there's like a cultural event or a historical event, something big or the name of somebody, Sometimes that's enough where people are going to look at the cultural or scholarly significance of something. Let's see what happens in this one. There's 105. Um, so there's how they deal with suspected terrorists. There's refugees. There's torture. Um, there's the criminal selfie, uh, live streaming. Uh, there's all sorts of different things going on in here. To gather more keywords, if you find something that looks pretty good like this, you can go into subject and see, is there something you were interested in in particular? So here, there's like um, religious identity. There's the media that it was working with. There's how the police reacted. There's surveillance, um, communication, trauma, disasters, mental health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once you find one good thing, you can pick those apart like that. There's another way to look at these. Let's go to a different database and do someone else's subject. Um, so let's look at haunted house scare acting. That might be under like education full text or communication or sociological. Ooh, let's try social science premium. <gasps> My connection's not private. Proceed even though it's unsafe. Oh no. OK, I'll have to fix that one. <laughs> We're backing up. Let's go to psych info. PsychInfo is the psychology of things. So let's try haunted house and acting or actor. Oh, look at this. It's even suggesting keywords. And then let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, and then there's an, maybe on the end of this, 
for scare actor. So in psychology, they're interested in these things. And they might give you, oh, there was nothing. If you get null results, don't give up. Um, keep on going back to different databases and trying them out. Uh, just to keep this video sane, I will not hunt around for things like that. Um, you get the idea. Those are scholarly articles. What does a scholarly article look like? I wanted to show you one, and I think I closed it. So let me, let me go back to PsycInfo. Psych <laughs> let me show you one. I'll just look up haunted, and then I will do make sure that we have full text, make sure, oh, there's a peer review checkbox. Ding, 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 ding. References available. <laughs> Let's find something that's newer than 1995. Clinical anecdotes, privilege, and the haunted house next door. That looks pretty good. Haunted people syndrome. That one even looks better. All scholarly articles are going to have the same look and feel and recipe. So here's how to decide whether something is a scholarly article, just in a pinch. If you find something and you want it to be a scholarly article, like this is the perfect thing that you found but you're not sure, email me and I'll help you find it. Um, if you want to be boring and take your time, um, if you go to Spirituality and Clinical Practice, that's the name of the journal, um, you can just go to Google and find that journal and it'll declare somewhere in here if it's peer reviewed. This one is not peer reviewed because um, usually they'll they'll tell us if that journal is um, peer reviewed or not. So this is an um, editor editorial journal. Wah wah. But at any rate, um, it's very scholarly still. So scholarly articles don't have any decoration. They'll have it be very um, black and white. We always see who the authors are, and we can always see. You'll see these are footnoted. You can always see. Um, who the authors are and their ORCID number that shows other things that they've produced. Um, typically it'll have like contact info so you can find that person. You can write to them and say, hey, I had a question. Um, the title will be very descriptive. It typically won't be fun to read. The date is prominent so we know um, when it was published. The journal is prominent so we know who published it. Um, all sorts of different markers. Um, so if you go to, like uh, going back to the food metaphor, if you go into a gas station, you don't know who like published the article or published the hot dog. Um, you don't know necessarily if anyone stood in for it. Does you, do you represent um, the Hot Dog Association of America? You get the idea. They have lots of signals to let you know. Um, they will have an abstract that will tell you the gist of what's going on really, really quickly. So you can consume like 50 articles in a short amount of time to figure out which one is good. So you can say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they talk about future research. Okay, so this one, it looks like it might be more of like a, a case study. Um, but you can see if people have accounts um, it's likely they will have a belief in the paranormal or religious ideology or ideological um, or social desirability. Oh, I didn't know that one. Um, so if they have one of these things, it could be that that's why they talked about um, being haunted. That's kind of cool. Um, I didn't know that. And that's backed up by evidence that they'll talk about as they go. So the beginning is a literature review, where they came from before. Literature review sometimes goes on and on and on and on, um, but it builds preference. They'll talk about how they gathered the data. <laughs> they are going on here. Looking for the methodology. Oh, and then they go to the, the might be just like a literature review. I, don't need, I, I won't keep going on this, but if it keeps on going on and on and on and on, they talk about the methodology, um, their methods, their references, the, where the precedents and the lit review, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera it's likely you're in good shape. If you're having a good time and you read it and it only took you about 90 seconds to read, it's probably not a scholarly article. Oh, and this has a citation generator too. All these databases have citation generators. Um, so look for them. They're not always correct, um, but you can see APA, Chicago, Harvard, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'm gonna make another video on how to find keywords. 
So check in with me on, on that. But this is basically what you missed in today's class.